you're 40 times more likely to work with the people you know, to have them come into your store, to have them call you up, to list their home, to have you reach out to them, or pass you along to friends that they know. Um, I, I'm not sure about you all, but every time I'm on Facebook, I notice there's some type of a request, a referral request, and those come from friends saying, hey, uh, the other day it was a framing. A friend of mine needed to find a good place to go to get a, f a picture framed. And it, it was amazing how many people responded to that request. So we're going to talk about contacts here, and we're going to talk about how to get all of those people into the database. Now, there are two primary places or ways you might fall into the, con the use of contacts in New Panda. One is the copy and paste or and or the address book importer. Now, I'm going to do number one and number two, because I want you to determine which of these two categories you fall into. And I'd like for you, if you would, if you have any thoughts on this, or just to give me a one or a two, use that question feature if you're on the recorded webinar and let us know, or always email us, help at newpanda.com as well. But the bottom line of this first scenario is that you have another database or other electronic files, but you maintain your master contact fields, the communication, any notes, tasks in another program like you use Outlook or you use an industry program or you use a point of sale system to put everybody that you know uh, or you use top producer software and that's your official place. You just need to make sure you keep everybody in sync in New Panda. And really all you need in New Panda is the person's name, email, and mobile phone for your New Panda tools, meaning you want to email them. You might want to move into text alerts to them in some uh, time in the future. You want to just have a basic contact list. All right, that's the number one scenario. By the way, if you're a number one, uh, just Put that in that questions feature uh, if you're on the, on the live webinar with me. That would be great. The scenario number two, then, is that there are imports by an advanced wizard capability. Now, what that simply means is you're going to make New Panda your official database, your primary location for contacts, and you're going to put addresses, not just home address, business address. You're going to need to then look up contact details, sort them by uh, names and or groupings of postal addresses and uh, birthdays, a whole set of lots of fields, company information, title information, etc. for your contacts. And you're going to use our full CRM, which is free, by the way, and includes to-dos and notes and a full set of features. So those are number twos. That's the second scenario. You're going to be one or uh, one of these. So let's talk about this first one, and that is the, the I'll call it the easy approach, and that simply means that I don't want you to feel like you have to load everything into New Panda, meaning you can come into New Panda and load contacts just for the people that you know and that you're actively working with to get started. And you can use just the import features to get started. Now, that means you're going to have a pretty easy job because you won't need to dig into contacts and look up all of their specific details and edit all of their individual fields. All of these features are available with New Panda if you wanted to use this as an official a source, including wedding anniversary, customer anniversary, different editions, by the way, like real estate you see at the bottom has different tools and different fields, uh, related contacts. This is a lot of info that you can manage in New Panda if it's your primary uh, database. Otherwise, I want to show you a feature that we have, uh, and it's just for contacts that can be loaded, and you can load them with import files. Uh, or you can use one of our new features, and this is the big rollout, by the way, that today I wanted to announce to you, and that is the feature and capability of importing, easily linking your address book contacts. What that means is if you have accounts online, and they include Yahoo or Gmail, or AOL, or Microsoft, MSN, Hotmail, all those Microsoft uh, mail programs, or you have an Apple address book on your Apple computer or device, uh, 
Or you even have a Plaxo. That's what that P is on the right. That's Plaxo is an online database as well, some of you have. And all of these can now be tied into New Panda in a really easy, amazing way. I'm going to show it to you. Click Import Export. So I've managed my contacts, and now I've clicked Import Export. And this is going to take me to the page where I can do one of two things to import. Number one is that import wizard. That's the, that's the harder way, let's call it. And I'm going to wait before I show you that. Or try our new address book importer. Now, in this magic box, <laughs> you can do one of two things. You can type a name. Say you have a first name and a last name, and it's John Doe, and it's John at Doe.com. Make sense? And then you have another person who you only know their name is John, and their email is John uh, W at AOL.com. Okay? And then you have a contact with only an email, potentially, right? And that's testing at testing.com happens to be that email. So this is a way, and you'll see the format here, you can put up to four fields in this order. First name, last name, email, mobile. Now let's say you're a user of things like an Excel file. You would have the ability to move all of your contacts. So let's say you have multiple contacts, and you want to move them into one single place, right? So you want to take them from all these fields you have for all these different contacts. So let's just say you have first name. And we're going to delete or merge the middle name right into the first if you think it's important. We don't need this record number, so I'm going to delete that column. We don't need the suffix, so I'm going to write now within a word or a numbers program. Does that make sense? All I really want to get are my first names and my email addresses if I have email. And you don't have to have email. I'm going to select them. I chose Command C to copy. I'm going to come down into here and I'm going to paste them. Does that make sense? So that's as easy as it is to also add your context from Excel. Now, let me tell you where it gets really fun. I'm going to click now the new address book importer. And you'll see, I want to hear feedback on this, by the way, what you think, if you like it, uh, if, you, if you'll use it. I want to know how many of you are from these different tools, these specific sources. So if you have Yahoo, if you have an account on Yahoo, a lot of you have had for a long time with a Yahoo address book, or you have Gmail, I know for a fact a lot of you are listening with firms that have adopted Google Docs and Google Apps and Gmail as their official corporate email provider and you have contacts in Gmail that should be receiving info from you, getting your newsletter every month, being wished a happy birthday, getting a holiday e-card, right? Get the folks in. These are the links, Windows, Hotmail, MSN, all the same, AOL, Plaxo, or the Macintosh. Uh, it's got to be an OS X address book from your personal computer, laptop, Mac, etc. I click on one of these now. This is live, just like live television, but it's called live webinar. And this is the ability for us to then uh, sign up and pick one. I'm going to pick Gmail to start. And now I want to show you what link has come up. It's come up to say, uh, are you all right adding? And there's an API called Cloud Sponge. I'll, we'll be giving more info on that. It's basically our partner in, in offering this new tool. And, your Google contacts just need you to grant access. So if you're sure about that, it'll check to make sure you got the right account as well. It'll go grab all of your imports, all of your contacts. Now this was a dangerous one because in this Gmail account I have 1,656 contacts. But as you can see, uh, I can have them all selected at the same time or choose none. I can go in even in the cases where there are multiple contacts for the same person, I can choose and add multiple contacts. I can choose from the right e I may have said that wrong. I can choose from multiple emails and pick the right one. All right, if this is one that has multiple, I can see I want to use Gary's uh, business email. So you see there are a lot of choices here. And again, at any time, you can just click the all or the none. Now that's going to remove the checkboxes from 
all of these contacts that you've chosen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, to give you a better idea of how this works, I'm going to pick a couple of folks. So I'm just going to go through here and pick some of the people that I know who I want to have uh, receive an email from me. So hand individual or select all, hit the next button, and you will see that what happens is these contacts are now added in to the magic box where you can import just the people that you want from any of these sources. Same kind of concept, right? It's going to work for all of the different types of tools you use. So if I choose Yahoo, you'll see that a Yahoo box is coming. And then every time, you'll see that I'll need to make sure I see that pop up for authentication. You're agreeing to uh, access your Yahoo contacts, and you'll click OK. And now Yahoo will show the one contact you have from Yahoo if you want to upload that one or not. If you ever want to go back right, to pick from another source, you can do that. I'd love to hear feedback as you're trying this. Remember, this is just rolled out for those of you on live. So let us know your thoughts, your feedback. We are working on additional import capabilities from other sources as well but I want to know what you think. Now let me show you. Remember how when you choose any of those, and you can choose multiple of them, and it will continue to populate or load your box, magic box of contacts. And then when you do click process, let's first though, by the way, know that we have Kim's mobile phone number. So I'm going to go ahead and put her mobile number in. I could do a little cleanup touch up here. I just want to make sure I always follow the use of these formats. And now I'm going to click the process button. And I just imported four contacts, and they're now in my contact list. You'll notice that one of them's last name is, uh, is Addis for Kim. So I'm going to go to contacts now. Under manager contacts, I'll click on contacts. And I'm going to do a search in the search contacts and put in Kim. When I click the uh, magnifying glass, you'll see I don't have any con oh I don't have any contacts yet names with Kim sorry about that but you'll see that I can go filter nest is what I wanted to show you and I can find the contacts imported specifically on 319 2012 this is a test account by the way so ignore my steps in some of these cases but I'm going to import I'm going to see my imported contacts from 319 so that's today and there's Kim and there's Scott and there's Brent and there's Carol so now they're all in my contact lists make sense and their email is there and it's all set and ready to go. Now, back to import export real quick because I just want to show you that the other option, we talked about how you could type in here, paste from Excel, or use the import from other existing programs. If you have large specific files, you can also choose a file. And you can work through this uh, step by step. And I'm going to show you here just an example of that with a file that I believe, ah, here's a, here's a really important key. If you're in Numbers or you're in Excel, you'll always want to take your file that you've tweaked or altered and modified the fields or the columns for, and you'll want to be sure that you go to Save As. So you'll want to Save As, or if you're on a Mac, export a version and then you'll have text encoding options. And I want to choose, and you must always choose, if you're using this uh, import feature, the wizard feature, then you'll need to choose a file. And it needs to be in a CSV format. Now, there are lots of programs that support CSV formats, right? And so you'll want to pick the one that's the most appropriate. I'm going to uh, pick this sample contact file as my choice and export that. And now I'll have a file that I can actually choose from. When I come to my, uh, when I click that load button, I'll see sample contact CSV, and that's the one I'll choose. And now I can click upload. This is the second option, by the way. Those of you who want to pick and choose from multiple fields. Now the neat thing about our system is that it allows you to then take that actual file that had a lot of features in that Excel or numbers page I had, that spreadsheet, 
and it allows me to see every one of the fields, but it's best to condense them down to just the ones you need. But if I want to put the first name, it even shows you, by the way, an example, like in the first record there's a Nathaniel, and then I know that in this column, last name, there's a, a last name, and then I don't need the middle name, the company, I can scroll down and find, yep, company, and then the title, I can look to, yep, job title, so it doesn't have to be a match, they don't have to be perfect. I can look through here to see, hmm, is there a field called, wow, in all of these, web page, there it is. So do you see what I'm doing here? I'm able to match and choose and even pick, of course, the important things like an email address. But this would be one you'd use if you really want to officially move everybody you got from one program to another. Some of you may be looking to save some money and move your contacts all to New Panda. What will happen then, and I'll just show you quickly, is that when you click the Proceed button, after you've mapped all of these fields, you're going, to get, uh, you're going to have info about those who have a match and those who might have an issue. Um, so there are two contacts that have invalid data or missing field requirements. You can see here how the mapping has occurred then for every field and what that issue may be. Uh, so that error, there's an error in this particular contact, it won't load. You also have the ability, by the way, to choose particular fields or particular groups that are in the system. I'll show you groups in a moment, but let's say you have a folks you want to talk to. You have a nonprofit organization. You're having a fundraiser. You've got a fundraiser group for mailings. You have a chamber group for mailings. If you're in real estate, you might have a, a hot buyers or sellers group. You again have those import groups. So I could I could send an email or I could group the folks who I just imported. I may want to add some to those. So you see all the capabilities here to add groups. Uh, for those of you using um, any of the newsletter products, you can select a channel uh, for those uh, enterprise e-newsletter products we have. And then you can accept and or import uh, and import the contacts that you've selected. And you can see in this case I was able to pick up 10 contacts, which is exactly the number that was in that Excel file that I started with. So those are all the capabilities. This is the most important job that you'll have in using New Panda, and that's why I wanted to highlight this today, uh, particularly the contacts, the ability to import and export. And I want to make sure that you know and that all of you uh, let us know if you're having questions or if you need help to get your contacts loaded. We for sure uh, want to make sure that you're working with us and that we're working with you in getting updates to the tools and, and helping get your contacts loaded because it's the most important thing you'll do and the contacts that you have in your lists are the ones you're 40 times more likely to generate business from. So that's a quick look at the importer for New Panda. I'd like to also, I know I see that there are some questions, and I, I also want to make sure that we look at some of the other manager contacts features. Many of you know these. The best thing to do once you have your contacts in is to take a look around, check out the to-do list feature, uh, see how you can edit and add to-do lists. There's even a mailing labels feature. There's an email opt-outs list that's very important because it'll show anyone who's received an email from you in the past, and they've opted out of the program. Uh, if you click on contacts, though, this is really where the heart of the program is. And here, you'll see how we can add upon filters. I currently have a group filter. There are other types of filters, like contacts who aren't in a group or recently deleted contacts, or we have a new mobile feature, mobile program, all of these will make sense on Friday for our webinar. Uh, ants with marital difficulties, one of my favorite groups that you might have for your business. Bowling, buyers, chamber, you get the idea. All the different kinds of groups you can create. To create a new group, you simply come over here, and if you want a, a group, if you happen to have a florist shop and you have specific lovers of orchids, sorry, then you can say orchid lovers and you can add that as a group. So now it'll appear in your list of available groups.